Our doctor on call is back to answer your health questions. We welcome again UK emergency physician Dr. Ryan Stanton. We've got quite a few questions coming in from our website, from even uh, Facebook on your emergency medicine page, or everyday medicine. You are an emergency medicine specialist, but everyday medicine is the name of the page. And uh, we'll get started with a question from Allison. She submitted on our website wanting to know, how does a person tell whether they have food poisoning or a virus or the flu? I know yesterday we just did uh, some information on the neurovirus warning from the health department. And uh, with all the things going on that people could get sick from, how do you differentiate? Well, it's food poisoning and the regular old gastroenteritis, what most people call the stomach flu are very difficult to tell the difference. In, in fact, they really kind of overlap in many ways. A lot of the, um, a lot of the stomach flu type viruses are actually food type viruses. But what we're talking about here is food illnesses such as the potato salad from July 4th that sat out for eight hours. Everybody ate it and then the rest of the night everybody was sick. That's typical food poisoning. A lot of bacteria cause that. Um, sometimes it's just their toxins. So with some foods, if they're allowed to stay out and get kind of nasty, um, even if you cook it, you can still get sick because of the chemicals that those germs produce. But we really can't tell the difference, and it's really not that important to be able to tell the difference. The most important thing is for people to stay hydrated. So what we encourage is to drink plenty of fluids. If you're un unfortunately throwing up, then that may be difficult. Small, frequent amounts of fluids to help stay hydrated, they usually clear up in about 24 to 36 hours. And that's what we've been seeing with that norovirus. Norovirus is a type a virus that travel, travels around the community. We've seen a lot of it here uh, in the central Kentucky area over the last few weeks. It's just like anything else in emergency medicine. We see waves like the ocean, and we just had our norovirus wave, and it's starting to back off now. Um, but if somebody's throwing up or having so much diarrhea that they can't um, stay hydrated, then that's when you come in and see us, call your doctor, get some medicines, get rehydrated, and that usually gives you enough to float through until the virus uh, or bacteria clears itself out. Well, uh, a different kind of illness that uh, question comes from Amanda. She submitted on the Everyday Medicine Facebook page. She says, I still have my tonsils, but I frequently have sore throats. Is it a good decision to have your child's tonsils removed, or do they help fight bacteria? Well, that's a great question, because back when I was young, tonsils were falling out of people's mouths left <laughs> and right. They couldn't come out fast enough. It was a great reason for a young kid to get to eat ice cream for a week. <laughs> That's not the case anymore, and that's a good shot of the back of the mouth. I was going to have you just open your <laughs> mouth and show a flashlight. <laughs> Figured you probably wouldn't go for that. Nah. But the tonsils are there on just on either side, the uvula, the punching bag hanging down there in the middle. Um, there's a couple of problems that can happen. The only reason they come out now is for four reasons. One is they get infected, tonsillitis, recurrent strep infection. Some people can actually be strep carriers, so every time you test it, even if they don't have symptoms, they'll test positive. Um, others is called a cryptic, uh, and that doesn't mean they're hard to understand. It's a cryptic tonsil, which just means it looks more like a prune than the typical just a little bit of wrinkles. So actually food gets stuck in it. So we can look in the back of the throat and see food sticking out of these little cracks, which is pretty nasty. That's pleasant. But it is. And, but <laughs> it causes bad breath. It can cause infections, and they come out for that reason. And then um, for those that can, um, uh, chronic tonsillitis, what we talked about, and then unusual enlargement or appearance. Those can actually be those maybe tumors, infection, they need to come out. That's very rare now. We don't see it a whole lot, and it's uh, easier to do in kids. Adults can have more complications with it, but it's very important to get in with an ENT if, if you have these problems to see if it's something that needs to happen. But for most now, you can hold on to them. Keep your tonsils and if keep you Keep them want. in there. <laughs> I still have mine. So. Mine are here, too. <laughs> I just won't show them on TV. Well, if you have a question for Dr. Stanton, you can go to the Doctor on Call section of WTVQ.com. That's under the Health tab.